All right, and I can see myself on the screen. <laughs> Welcome back. This is Entertainment Thursday, and we get to continue entertaining you from wherever it is that you are watching the show from. Now, I am joined on set and set by two amazing gospel artists. On my immediate left is Mwanko, and on my far left is uh, teacher Jacob. Welcome to the show. Hi, Mwanko. Hi, Vision. How are you? Because Mzima Kabisa, how are you doing this Asante. morning? Thanks for having us and appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you can just tell us something about Mwanko. Yeah, Mwanko is a gospel artist, uh, entrepreneur, and uh, philanthropist. Uh, I am also, you know, uh, head of uh, public relations and communication at uh, Pan African eyewear brand called La Pair, mm -hmm. where I oversee over seven countries. And I'm also president of Honor Foundation, where we are based in most of six, more than six countries. Yeah, so that's pretty much what Monk is all about. Amazing. But most likely the gospel artist that I am. Mm -hmm. That is what you're pushing here today. Of course. The musician, yeah. Monko. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Now, teacher Jacob, when you are a teacher, you are Tell me something about teacher Jacob. Um, I'm, I'm teacher Jacob. I'm a teacher by profession. Oh, yes. you're actually a teacher by profession? Yes, see I jokes. Teach. I see jokes. Ah, I teach, okay. I teach. Politia. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Yeah. I teach in Harambe Primary School, Buruburu, and also I do music. Yeah. Yeah. How is it like doing music? Do your students know? Do your pupils know that um, you're actually a teacher? Yes, they know. In fact, the video that we're promoting, the song that we're promoting right now, I featured them, so they know I'm a teacher. Yes, uh, I've just watched that video. Actually, yes. they are the only ones in that video. It's you, yes. and the, so the, they're the pupils from your school. Yes, they are. How how how, how is that work relation relations um, with them? Mm -hmm. Them knowing that teacher na kwangam sani, but bado ni teacher. kufunza. What what subject do you teach? I teach mathematics, hey. music. Malimu <laughs> ma, hapa ni wapi? Hapa. Malimu wa wata mefika penye tunaudiza hapa ni wapi? Muna tuingilia sana. So how Sorry. is that relationship with the, with the children? I see it's just, uh, it's just good. It just requires discipline and understanding. Then you're good to go. Yeah. There's nothing much, yeah. Yeah. Just discipline and understanding. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course you expect a teacher to mention something to do with discipline. <laughs> yeah, <course>. definitely. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Actually, now that you say that, um, Teacher Jacob, because, before I come back to you, Jumwanko, you can't okay. make it. <laughs> okay. Do you feel like Kenyan teachers always like put... Um, people down. I, I don't agree with that because I've had very amazing teachers in my life and my dad was also a teacher. Mm -hmm. So when people are talking about teachers, mara nyingi kwa social media tunaona tu akionyesha vile you know mwalimu wangu hata ndo aulizwe hapa ni wapi it's cause they try to show you that you can't get anywhere in life. Uh, what, what do you feel about that notion you yourself being a teacher? I think uh, at that time that uh, what walikuwa naongea hivyo maybe i feel like uh, the teacher had seen something negative or mm -hmm. the teacher was trying to correct you mm -hmm. so you know the teacher at that time is seeing you as someone who is making mistake and he or she does not want you to make the same mistake or repeat the mistake so it's just trying to guide you but mm -hmm. then you know people tend like when you're growing up or when you are being told to, to move into the right path then you come up and saying uh, this teacher is boring, mm. such kind of thing. So, uh, and then, uh, you know, our work is not like to, to, to make sure that uh, you make it, we teachers will make it big. We just want learners to, or those people that we are guiding, uh, to move into a certain direction, which is the right one. So when the teacher is guiding you, teacher are now buyer. Okay. It's just perception that uh, maybe we may make it, maybe we will have a teacher, mm. you're going for holiday. And then I unanza kuingilia mwalimu. But definitely, we are good. We are called to serve by okay. God. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Definitely. Teachers are good people. Definitely. Yes, Mwanko. I've, I've got amazing ones here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this one is my goal. So. I want to get back to uh, music, okay. which is why we're here today. Um, and Mwanko, I want to know what are your earliest memories of music? Oh, wow. When can you say you realized, okay, 
there's something called music and I actually like it? Yeah, yeah, that's a very good, interesting question, of course. Um, my first encounter with music happened when I was like five years old. Mm. And um, five years old, it was uh, before I left Kenya to, you know, uh, because, you know, I'm a cocktail African, so mm -hmm. my dad Kenyan, my mom is half South African and Congolese, so I left Kenya for South Africa, and then it happened to the fact that uh, I, my, my mom was a born again Christian, so I, she took me to church, and then the first encounter I had with music was when I was five. So it was uh, during, uh, you know, uh, Sunday school where children were supposed to, you know, present some some singing or talent. I happened to sing, and everyone was like, "Oh wow!" So the pastor uh, made me integrate the, you know, the the, the choir by mm. then, and I started as the drama. I started drumming after at drumming. five. Yeah, at five for mm -hmm. real. I started drumming, and then on top of that, I learned how to play guitar, and then uh, singing is natural. So it's just uh, like. Uh, popped out by then what uh, made uh, me stay in the ministry it's actually songwriting when mm -hmm. I started and uh, by the time I was 20 years old I met uh, Eric Smith uh, I don't know if you know this song mm -hmm. yes Eric Smith mm -hmm. So you will see him in those videos. So I wrote uh, partly, uh, you know, I worked with uh, Eric Smith, <coughs> and then from that we won Groove Award. After Groove Award, to the spotlight, and uh, I got, you know, I got the attention of Nathaniel Bassi. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know Nathaniel of Bassi. Course, yes. Who know Nathaniel? Yeah. So I traveled with Nathaniel Bassi. I stayed like nine months in Nigeria, where we worked on a, 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 an, an album. I don't know if you know this song, Summer, Winter, or mm -hmm. Everywhere I Go. Yeah. So from there, I gathered this experience internationally, where now I wanted uh, to come back. I came back when I came back to to Kenya. I was like, let me put this in good use and uh, export uh, the Swahili language to the extreme world and that's I think what I'm trying to do. Amazing, mm -hmm. amazing. You've given us actually a history of yourself in music. <laughs> now if you may just do the same, mm -hmm. tell me when, when exactly you first encountered music and how that journey has been for you as teacher Jacob. Uh, it started because uh, my father is a pastor so growing up he could take me to church. Mm -hmm. Say, my mother is also was also back then was also a church secretary, mm -hmm. mm. so she was also in choir. Yeah. So she could carry me along. So from there I gained experience. <coughs> Sorry, and then as that was going on, we enrolled to some musical classes in primary school. Mm -hmm. Then we started continuing keeping it up, and then until it reached a point where by now I started saying in high school i started saying now let me try to write music and i find myself just writing music and then i decided why don't i try to get into the studio then i started and then uh, it keeps on going on mm -hmm. so it's not like something that uh, i just woke up and said i want to do it okay. it's something that is in me you know the parents just like you said yeah. as you said it starts with the parents of those people that are guiding you and also listening to many music like I listened to when I was growing up I was listening to reggae a lot mm -hmm. yeah so it just keep on going on me but then you saw you <laughs> listen <laughs> to reggae but we used to argue a lot you know mm -hmm. uh, this direction you want to take when you are in teens and so we are growing this direction you want to take and your parents also want to do this yeah mm -hmm. and speaking about that um <coughs> now that both of you started music in the church yes. and i feel like for most artists almost all the artists okay not all of them but most of them they started music in the church even for the secular artists they started back when they were in in church and then they decided to you know Ha get their own way and you know do mm. secular music and not gospel music but the fact that you started in class i at the age of five in church and you're still doing it in the church would you say it has been easy to sustain you know the um, what do i call it the spirituality and just being in in church has it been difficult for you in any way have you encountered any um struggles being a gospel artist uh yeah of course uh, i i believe there's no journey without uh uh, obstacles you know if a journey is uh, too small that means you are going to the wrong direction mm -hmm. yeah so we've 
encountered a lot of, uh, personally, I've encountered a lot of uh, ups and downs uh, when, w with, with my music and also my career overall. Mm -hmm. So it happened to me like I was offered a lot of opportunity to work with um, amazing artists uh, who happen to do uh, open music, let me not call it secular, mm -hmm. so they happen to do open music. So for me, I feel like, yeah, so um, music is a universe where, you know, people come together to express what they feel and to make use of uh, the talent to, you know, entertain people mm -hmm. um, uh, in different subjects and messages. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's gospel. So why I do gospel, it's not because um, I do it to entertain or for fun. I do it because it is a calling, first of all. Mm -hmm. And uh, that calling for me, as an evangelist that I am, I have to invite and uh, taking, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Bible uh, to the world through music because uh, music is the easiest way to communicate to people without uh, having to interfere with the barrier that we call language. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone in different countries, in different regions can literally understand music without having to listen or to, to understand, understand the words the language, that yeah. uh, is being uh, sung or spoken in the song. So probably that's it. All right. Yeah. Um, um, teacher Jacob, I want you to tell us about the song that you're promoting right now. What is it all about? What was the inspiration behind it? And uh, where we can find that song? Mm, the song I'm promoting right now is called uh, Una Staili Sifa. It's a song that I wrote after, after having, going through a lot of problems, challenges here and there. Mm. Like... Um, surviving a lot of attacks in Garissa. I studied in Garissa Teachers College. Oh. So going, coming through, growing up in the ghetto in Kibra, you see those challenges, your friends are dying here and there. Until now, early this year, I was lucky I got employment by the, by the I mean, the government. Mm -hmm. So when they, I got that employment after trying for so long, I decided now it's time now, I praise God. So I decided to write that song, Una Staili Sifa, mm -hmm. to give praises and thanks to God. And um, it's a song that I'm promoting. It's part of EP that I'm also pushing. Because okay. I also have EP out. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's basically just a song that uh, I wrote thanking God. And uh, the journey has been so long to be here today, especially if I can stand here today here at KBC TV. It's really, it's, it's really amazing. I really appreciate you guys. And mm -hmm. um, the song is out on everywhere. Uh -huh. YouTube, everywhere, Boomplay, any, any streaming services that you can find. All right. And yes. where do they find you on social media? Social media, they just find me on IG, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook as I am Teacher Jacob, a.k.a. Mwali Mumsani. Hi, I'm Fata Mwali Mumsani. <laughs> yes, All right. Amko, you can tell us about uh, the song that you're promoting and where we can find it, the inspiration behind it, and where <coughs> we can find it, as you also give us your socials. Yeah, of course. Uh, the song is called Ushuhuda, which means... Uh, Testimony, and the Ushuda vibe. The, the the song is uh, emphasizing on the the life of, of, of overall as a roller coaster life is, and uh, we're looking uh, at the song. Where I'm speaking about the plan God has uh, for the human humanity, especially Christians, where uh, we say Anatengeneza Ushuda is crafting your testimony, so you are you are still in God's plan and uh, uh, it doesn't matter how long it takes, uh, God is still with you mm -hmm. and uh, give him time because God is not a God of fast food mm -hmm. and uh, give him time to prepare something delicious, something good for I you to enjoy. I love that. God is not a God of <laughs> fast, fast food. food. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so the song is uh, available on, on all streaming platforms and uh, you can find me on all social media. I go by the name Wanko Kez, Yani Wanko Anajali. So uh, God bless you so much. Thank you so much for joining us right here on Good Morning Kenya Entertainment Thursday and all the very best in everything you, that you do. Yeah, thank you. All right, that was Mwanko and Teacher Jacob. And right now we are taking a very short musical break, but don't you go too far. We'll be back with more.